Hello everyone, today we will do another very simple test. It's the one sample Wilcoxon test. Um, this is the non-parametric alternative for the one sample t-test. Um, as usual, I'll start with an example. This is a corn bunting. A couple of weeks ago, we captured about 17 different corn buntings and we measured uh, these individual birds from the tip of the beak till the end of the tail. So we measured the total length um, and we noted down the length. And this is this is what the data set is actually. So let's attach the data set and let's take a look at it. Um, so on the left we have the different IDs of the birds, so the different identities. And then here are their corresponding lengths um, in the column length. First of all, let's take a look at the box plot. Gives us an idea of the distribution, also gives us an idea of the spread, the variation, and also the medium. This is what the box plot, box plot looks like. Uh, it doesn't appear to be normally distributed. doesn't have to be because it's a non-parametric test. Um, one assumption that has to be met is that all samples need to be independent for this test. Now this is the case because we, we capture different birds, so each bird is unique, so all samples uh, can be considered independent. As I said, uh, these samples do not have to be drawn from a population with a normal distribution, or in other words, in this case, uh, we don't need normally distributed data. So we can still draw the normal quantile plots to check for normal distribution. But as we can see, this is normal quantile plot. As we can see, um, this doesn't look good because what you want to see is you want to see that all of these points follow this line, they're on this line, um, but it's a very weird pattern. They're not on this line. Uh, this doesn't look good. So we cannot assume um, that we have data that follows a normal distribution. But as I said, it's not a problem because we're doing a non-parametric test, the Wilcoxon test. So what we want to know now is if these birds that, we, that we've captured, if their length um, equals 18 centimeters. So what we do is we type Wilcox.test, then we attach or we, we indicate the data, and then we say we're looking at the, at the length column, and then as mu, uh, we type 18 because we want to know if 18 um, is actually within the same distribution. So let's let's run the test, and this is then the output. Um, what we see here, what's very important here, is the the p-value, of course. And what we see is that it's much larger than 0.05, which means that this value of 18 does not deviate from um, the population, from the dis distribution of the population. So we cannot reject the null hypothesis. Um, so it's actually part of the it's part of the population and that was it if you want the script you can find it below the video